Okay, hello again. So uh, before we begin, we have a question. Um, I guess to ask is about it's about lab by itself, by yourself? It's about lab, okay. If we have time, we'll do it. Otherwise, you have to come on Microsoft Teams. If you notice, I added all you as optional to a weekly meeting that comes up. If you look at your Outlook, if you look at your email, you've been invited to a meeting every Thursday from su such and such, okay? Have you seen that? Uh, so click on Accept to so make sure that it notifies you at, during the office hours, so you can actually just click and join the meeting and uh, we can all work together. But sure, if we uh, have time to go through it, I'll help you, um, but um, I'll do the lecture first, okay? Uh, yes. No, quiz starts next week. Qu quiz starts ne next week, okay? What else? Any questions? Next week, all, the quiz is always during lab during the time that we, we are sure that we have computers available. Any other question? Quiz, when I ask quiz, it's from beginning of IPC 144 till the day I teach. Whatever I teach, that's the material that you're gonna have on it, okay? I can't say I'm not gonna ask this, that of course it's gonna be focused on the weeks before, but everything, I, I, have, I have to use everything. I can't say I'm not going to use for loop because you learned it last semester. <laughs> can't do that, right? Okay, anything else? Any other question? Any other question? No? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let the games begin. Again, uh, I'm going to create um, uh, a Visual Studio project, and hopefully this is going to be the last time. So, uh, starting with a new project. MTC++ project, next. I'm gonna go to, um, we are section B, so I'm gonna go over here, it's gonna be zero, uh, select folder, and it's gonna be zero three, is it three? Yeah, zero three dash September 16th, and always place the solution project in the same directory for now until we understand when we need it. Uh, create, it is created, and then we begin. I'm gonna create a new item, prg.cpp, and I'll start coding. Include IO stream using namespace std int main return zero. Where does that return go when I say return zero? Who calls, everybody, we call other functions, the functions return us. Nobody calls main, so. To the operating system. So the operating system actually picks that one up. Let me see if I can control the, I have to use the things on the wall. These are the ones. Hopefully this is the one. Fingers crossed I'm not going to break anything. No. Whoa. Okay. Too much. One more time. So we need this. This is okay, right? Because the light was right on that. We couldn't see anything. All right. So, uh, it goes back to operating system. Uh, we're going to learn in, uh, later on in 3, 4, 5 how we catch those things so you can actually get those values back and uh, do whatever you want to do. Um, uh, we talked about C in and C out. We know what they are. Um, and um, talking about scopes, um, what is a scope? A scope is essentially where... Uh, your program can access a variable, okay? So we need to understand what scopes are. I'm gonna go through a little things of it, not too much. I'm just gonna explain. Uh, uh, it's not gonna be that much in detail. I'm just gonna give you some examples. So when you write a program, um, the variables that you put at the top of the program inside your application, inside your uh, file that is not within any function, 
we used to call those what in C language? Global variables? They are not global variables. They are file scope variables. They are just visible to this translation unit, to this file. We have several files, we saw it, when we are compiling something. So when you put something at the top, it's not global variable. We can make it global, we're gonna learn later on how to actually make something global, like see in and see out. See in and see out are global variables, global objects that you can access them everywhere. How do they make it global everywhere? You just include IO stream and you have access to it. How it happens, we'll learn later. Uh, scope of any function begins at, the, at, at its open curly bracket and uh, then if the scope belongs to a function, the variable created has a function scope. But if scope belongs to a command, then it becomes a block scope. So essentially a block scope is a subset of a function scope. Are you okay with that? So if I mention over here i, this i actually is accessible throughout main. But when I say over here integer j, it's only accessible within this if statement. I can do stuff with j, but as soon as line nine is over j, poof, vanishes. It doesn't exist. And if it's something in a loop that you come back in, it gets recreated. So it's not gonna keep its old value. It literally gets recreated. And this is not a C++ thing, it's a C thing, which means you can create a variable as begin at the beginning of any block. So you have an open curly bracket, you can create a variable. That's C, that's not C++, okay? In C++, you can create a variable anywhere, halfway through your code. And after that, it's gonna come to the world and continues the existence, yes? Yeah, the module. It, a mo it, we call it file, file scope, module, or translation unit. These are potatoes, potatoes, I don't know, pitotos, <laughs> the three of them are the same, okay? So it doesn't make any difference, okay? So, so essentially, if, yeah, the module, the module, the, that, that translates, because when you include something in a file, that, that becomes part of that module, right? So, um, so these, this is kind of the extent of, uh, uh, of uh, what we have, but when you are actually dealing with uh, structures, then we have a new type of, when, we, uh, when I say class, what do I mean? Structure. Structure, remember? So when we, are, when we are dealing with classes, we have a new thing right now. Remember that I put a, a method inside a structure, a member function inside the structure, and when you create a variable inside the structure, so if I create something like that, something like this over here, if I say struct uh, name, and in this name, I create character uh, value. So that's the value of the name, that is 81 characters. And in here, I have void display. And this display is supposed to show the name, right? So we call these, if I can type it, we call these, uh, class scope. Why? Because, again, the variable created in the class name is visible to all the functions inside name and nowhere else. So as soon as name comes to being, all its entities come to being and all its functions have access to all its properties. That's why I don't have a value in the display, but I can actually show it. Okay, so that is a class scope. The other one is a global variable. In C, C, we called it. In here, we call it file scope. And uh, what else? Scope of main begins over there. That's right. So functions, I is function scope. Um, J is block scope. Global scope, we'll find out later on what it is. Probably in one of your workshops you'll see it, or I'll give you an example later on. But this is as far as we go down to this point. Any questions about scopes? Okay. Another thing you need to know, if I actually write over here integer i, this one has a block scope too, right? So what happens to the i in main? 
In this if statement, if I say I, which one do I mean? Does it give me an error? No, it doesn't give me an error. So what happens if to the I of main, if I have an I inside an if statement? You know what it looks like? It looks like I have somebody outside of this class called Jack. And the name of this gentleman is Jack too. When I say Jack, that person will not hear me. This person is going to answer me. Okay, so that I will shadow the I that is outside. Anything you do to inside the if statement will do will work with the I that is closest to it, and the other one will not be affected at all. Of course, if I'm outside and do something to I, then it has nothing to do with the I inside. Yes. No. No, there is impossible. It literally covers, it shadows, it hides it. So I can simply, the best thing over here, they say shadow, okay? They say shadows. Uh, I in main, in main scope, okay? Not main, any function. In I in function scope, okay? Which the best, best way to say is it hides it. It literally hides it. You won't see the, hides the I, the I in function scope. And it goes back in and it's the same thing. Are we okay? Yes. Macros? Extremely, extremely too rich for our blood. In OP345, we will talk about it. Okay. Since he asked, I'm just going to tell you what macros are because macros are like asking somebody to come and write a code for you. They are not actually programmed. They're nothing. They are not even there if, if you don't call them. It's as if you're asking somebody, could you please write this code for me because I'm too lazy? That's what it is. So they have nothing to, so it's a completely different ball game. Macros are a compiler thing. They have nothing to do with C language. Macros are compiler language. It's like include. So they are two different entities. You are talking about two different times of execution. Macros are in compile time. These are in uh, runtime. Completely two different ball game. Okay. So let's not let's not get confused. Like things like that that you hear. No, don't don't. So everybody, use your extra short term memory and forget what we said about macros completely, as if we never talked about it. Okay. There are no macros, and he's a bad boy. Okay, all right. So in here, I'm going to call it scopes. So that's going to be a scopes. Okay. Now I'm going to start actually talking about uh, all the things that we talked about. I'm going to talk about it in detail. Right? I created a little class and I put some things over there and I said, uh, this, these are like three, four weeks of thing that I'm just gonna give you an, uh, a preview. And today we're going to actually continue going through all those things and one by one, see what needs to be done. So uh, let's say I want to um, create a bar chart, a horizontal bar chart, and I want a bar chart of mine to draw bars on the screen. Okay, I want it to do that for me. So if I want to do that, I want to uh, write a, f uh, a function that does that. So I'll go include IO stream again using namespace STD. Don't get bored with these things that you see I am typing over here. The, one of the most important uh, 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 key things that you can do in teaching is to be slow. When I actually do that, you are seeing me typing it and your mind say, come on, that's STD, type it. And that's a review for you. So the, this typing over here slows me down so you can grasp the idea. If I just go, and explain everything like that, I have all the code over there, I can just copy and paste it. Okay, but I don't wanna do it. I'm writing it so you can see me write it, therefore it's slow enough to be Okay, so be patient, that's what I'm saying. That patience commits the information into your long-term memory, okay? Deep breath, let's continue. So bar, I wanted to create a bar. So I'm gonna, 
uh, not bar that you drink in it, I mean like a bar, okay? Okay, so, so void bar, var, bo, bo, bar, okay? And that bar of mine, I need to draw it with something. So I want to draw the bar with like some characters. I want to draw a bar with something. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, I want, so I'm going to say I want to use some character to actually print it. So I'm going to say character fill. I'm going to fill it with some kind of a character. And then after that, I am going to uh, see what is the length of the bar. So I'm going to go over here, int length. Okay, so that's going to be the length. And writing the code for this is two seconds. So first I'm going to put a bar, so it means we are starting the bar. So I'm going to have C out. I'm going to do something like this, okay? And maybe we want to show the value of the bar so we can see the value on the, yeah, let's do that. Why not? So I'm going to do like this, and I'm going to show the length, okay? And then I'm going to, just draw after that. So I'm going to say four integer i set to zero, i less than length, uh, and i plus plus. And then after this, length is wrong. And I don't know why I put semicolon over there, that thing thing over there. I don't know. So length over here, length, it's going to be like that. And then in here, we're going to show the characters one by one. So see out. Uh, we're going to show the fill in here. And then we're going to go to new line, right? So for all those people who got the project from their friends and submitted it as their own, how do we convert a for loop to a while loop? <laughs> this is, so just uh, let's do this. So what this for loop looks like, if I want to actually do it in a for loop, I have to have over here integer i set to zero in a while loop, right? Then I'll go while i less than length, right? Then in here I have to say c out fill, then in here I can say I++, plus plus, correct? That's, that's essentially what it is. So what happens over here goes to the end of the for loop. What happens over here goes right before the for loop, and the condition is only one thing that sits in the middle. Are we good with this? Any questions, suggestions? So now I would say, why, don't I, why can't I think that these two things are happening at the end? Can't I say that? So if I do that, I can actually do it like this. Take a look. C out, fill, comma, and be done with it, right? Same thing, shorter. I don't have to write curly brackets, and it does the same thing, right? So it says, first, i is 0. Check if i is less than length. At the end of the loop, print something and add 1 to i. Ta-da! OK, so it's going to keep doing that, right? You can add many things at the beginning, too, but you cannot have initialization. You cannot have creation. You cannot say integer i0, comma, j, integer j0. You can't do that. If you have creation of something, you have to do it outside there. But you can say integer i0, comma, uh, I don't know, because this comma is not the comma that you do when you create variables. So if you have several things to do, then you have to take the integer i have integer i outside, then you say i is set to 0, uh, and print this, and do this, and do that. So for example, if I wanted those things to get printed first, right, what I could, let me just save this. So I'm going to say uh, b bar dot cpp, and I change it, so I'll, I'll show you. So now. Now I have this. So this is happening only once before, right? Correct? So in here, I'm just going to not to. I could leave it in there. Should I? Yeah, why not? So I'm just going to copy this, uh, x, OK, and put a comma over here and put that one in there, right? But the problem is that over here, th this integer i thing is going to ca cause trouble, so I'll take it out and put over here into dry, right? So set the i to 0, print that thing only once at the beginning. And so as you see, it shrinks and gets better. Usually seasoned programmers, in their mind, they know exactly how a for loop and stuff works. They don't like to type too many things. They want to be quick. That's why they write one line. It's not magic. It's just think about that while loop. 
So you have an integer i, y, you have, that thing happens once before, so it's gonna set the i to zero, print that thing out, and the condition for the while, and so on and so forth. But this one cannot be more than, you cannot put a comma in here, that's just dumb, okay? This is a condition that's supposed to be true or false, so you need one statement that tells you if something is true or false, right? So that's my bar. So in main over here, I wanna draw a bar, so I'll go bar with a dash and uh, 50 of it, okay? And I uh, print and run the program, and three years later, it comes up with, a, with an output, did I say 330 and I put 50 over there? <laughs> Anyways, 50. So it actually shows 50 characters. So it's 50 and it shows the bar for me, right? Are we good? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? We're good? All right. Now, are you sure would you like to shut down the system? Cancel. We'll shut down the system. Okay. I said cancel. Swear to God. Laptop? Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Suddenly decided to shut down the system. Okay, so, so if you recall, like we said that C++ is a polymorphic thing, right? We talked about encapsulation, putting the data and behavior together, and we said, what is, a, what is polymorphism? What is polymorphism? What is polymorphism? That's perfectly correct, polymorphism. So what is poly? What, you know what does it mean, poly? It's a Latin, Latin thing, poly, like polygon. You ever heard poly? Poly means ma, 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 many, right? Poly means many, and morph is shape, so many shapes. Polymorphism, it means having many shapes, okay? Remember that, so, it has, so I can do the same thing in here. I would say, okay, let's say if I don't mention what the length is, if I don't mention what the length is, I want the length to be 70. Let's say by default, when you say just draw a bar, that means 70. Okay, let's say something like that. If that's the case, what do I do? I'm gonna say void bar care fill, but I would not write the other one, okay? And then in here, all I need to do is to call the other bar using my code. So in here, I'm gonna say pass the fill, and a 70. So now what happens, compiler in C++ doesn't see the signature of the function of a, what is the signature of a function? You already talked, what is the signature of a function? Yes, and the prototype of a function does what? Prototype of a function, signature of a function, what is it? Like, it's, Good, in C++ it's the arguments, okay? But that's one of the things like you need to do. You need to be able to, to explain things. Like uh, signature of a function what is what identifies a function. Like what is, like if I actually write something and sign, what does it mean? That signature identifies this is far that, right? Signature of a function uniquely identifies a function. In C language, what is the signature of a function? Do you remember? What is the signature of a function? What is a 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 signature of a function? Okay, let's go back. What uniquely identifies a function in C language? What uniquely identifies a... No, see, I know when I, when I ask a question, you go, you go over there, you, you, you kind of, you know, but it's just English. I'm asking you, what uniquely identifies you? Your name, right? What is your name? Anush. Anush? Yes. Anush, okay. Any other Anushes over here? Do we have any other Anush? No, so there you go. So what uniquely identifies this gentleman? Anush, right? But if this gentleman's name was Anush too, then I would say Anush, they would both say yes, that's C language. But if I say, but for, if I say Anush with a beard, Anush without a beard, right? <laughs> so now identification is not only the name, but other things. 
So there's a signature. That C++, I have two bars. They are both bars. But one of them has a character and an int coming after that. The other one, or the name of bar over here actually for C++ is bar, bar, char, int. And this one is bar, char. Do they look the same to you? No. Therefore, they are different. But from uh, Ruki's point of view, who doesn't know what is lying behind the scene, they are both bars, therefore polymorphism, right? Later on, you're going to see this, this. Anyways, forget about it. But, but yeah, so, so now I can say over here bar and a plus, right? And I don't mention anything. Because the first one has a character, it will pick the one with the character. And the second one has a character and an integer. It's going to pick the one with the character and an integer, and therefore the execution is going to the execution is going to be done as such. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? One? Yes. And if Anush over here has an exactly twin brother, identical twin brother, there is no way that you can find out which. You would get an error. Okay. okay. <laughs> there is nothing. Like signature. So when I say signature of a function in C++ is the name and the arguments, that's what it is. If you have the name. And, so if I have bar character ch and int age, it's still the same signature because it's char int. The names of the variables don't do anything. Put yourself in the compiler's shoe, OK? Put yourself in. Does this over here say fill? It's just the character. That's what compiler knows. Does this one says length? No, it's just an integer. So that's what it identifies it with. Are we good? All right. So we're going to have return over here. And then, I forgot about the return thingy. And now let's create another bar. So that bar, I would say, if I just don't say anything, it's going to be a bar that the length is whatever the default length was. And the, what should we call it? The fill character would be, for example, the assignment operator. So, so I can say void bar. Now in here, I, I would put something like bar. Uh, I could call either the other bar or the original one. It doesn't make any difference. So I'm going to put assignment, and uh, that's it. So when I call this bar with no argument, it will call the bar with one argument, and that will call the bar with two arguments, right? So now if I say over here bar, just bar and nothing else, that's what's going to happen, right? And maybe I want to say, what if I just want to have a bar with length? So the, the signature of this one is bar. What if I just want to have a, a, a bar that has a length? So what is the signature of this? Is it different with the others? Yes. But if you go to old compilers, old C++ compilers, it, it would give you a conflict over here between the bar at line 8 and the bar at line 14. Because character is an integer and length is an integer. Okay? So in old times when it was passing, they were passing the, uh, any type of integer that is smaller than an integer. When they were passing it, they would expand it to an integer, pass it, and shrink it, get it back. Because of that, compiler would, couldn't identify what is the difference in C++ between a char, short, and an int. They were all int to, the, to them. Okay? Here, no. We are good now. Yes? Yeah. IPC 1.4 carries an int, right? It's a smaller integer. Smallest integer in C language. Is, they called it character because it's long enough to hold an ASCII, ASCII code. ASCII code is an integer, right? When you say CH and you print that thing as a character, where is it, at line 5, when you're printing the fill, C out is a polymorphic object. So it looks at the character. It sees the type is char. What it does, it says, OK, so I'm going to show the shape of whatever that, the ASCII code of that thing is. 
Are we good? All right. So characters are integers, smallest integer possible in C++. And C and C++ language, they have no uh, design for any type of character. We, you, you don't have a string. Any, every, everything that you deal with is just an array of characters. You just call it, I'm going to put a null at the end and call it a string. So you come up with a standard. Otherwise, it's just an array of small integers back to back. Okay? Next. So if I want to do this one, I'm going to say, for example, bar with an assignment, and I'm going to put over here length. Okay? And now if I say over here bar, uh, I don't know, 25, then it's going to select the proper one, and I'm going to have the 25 thingy over here. Are we good? Questions? Suggestions? Yes. Yeah, we can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But don't abuse the capability of C++. Don't say, I'm going to have a bar with character in, and the other one is going to integer character, but it's going to do something completely different. Remember, when I say bird flies and airplane flies, they are both actually flying. I cannot say, since it's polymorphic, I'm going to make the flying swim. I'm going to say, fish flies too, and I'm going to make it swim. That's not the case. So don't abuse the polymorphism. It is supposed to be a bar. Okay? Got it? All right. Yeah. So the most important thing in an object, because in an object-oriented language, you can, especially C++, you can redefine anything. It's polymorphic, right? Later on, I can redefine the plus sign to do whatever I want. For example, put two strings together. I can do that you will see how we can actually overload less than operator if you want. What do you think that operator is? You see that insertion operator that I call it? That's not insertion operator. That is actually called left shift in C language. It shifts the bits inside a, an integer one to left as, as if somebody's pushing from one side to left. They overloaded it so it does print for you because it just looks good that way, okay? So what I'm saying is that we have to be responsible. We, sh we shouldn't go bananas and then create a function called display that actually reads something from keyboard. It doesn't make sense, does it? Okay, so use your powers responsibly, okay? Don't write gibberish code that nobody understands what's going on with it, okay? So that's that one. So the proper way of, oh, so let's modularize this thing and just kind of review the, what modules, how modules happen. So if I want to, so this one is the, so this one is a polymorphic Thing, so I'm going to call it C uh, pa, 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 pa. Uh, um, overloaded bar, which is polymorphism. Okay, so that's that one. Let's bring one, that ba ba one back up. So I want to create a bar module whose job is to print bars. Okay, if I want to do that, I'm going to create a header file. And I'm going to make that one uh, a new item. I'm going to call it, uh, where is it? So a bar.h, and it's going to be a header file. And I'm going to click Add. And you're going to see that pragma once. We don't want it. We're going to say, if not defined, and in here I'm going to say, sdds bar underline h, that was the standard, right? Then we bring this one up, and we type over here, define. And that's what we create. Always copy and paste. Do not retype it. Because if you make a boo-boo and it's misspelled, then we're in trouble. Yes? With, with or without? Doesn't matter. Like, yeah, but yeah, as long as to do that H thingy, that one extra guarantees that it's not going to get mixed up with anything. So that's that one. And now immediately I am in SDDS namespace. So I'm going to say namespace SDDS. And now I have to think. So as I told you, this part of the code is done blindly. Use your memory for this. So when you are creating a header file, this is 
writing nothing. This is an empty header file. Remember that. Okay? Now I'm going to bring the prototypes of bar in. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, come over here. I'm going to bring all these things in here and put it right in bar. And because I'm lazy, I'm just going to do like that. Put a semicolon, put that lat, put a semicolon, and put a semicolon, and put a semicolon. Never ever write your prototypes like this. Worst thing to do ever because it doesn't give any explanation of what the heck bar is. Use the opportunity in here to actually explain what the thing is. Car to fill the bar. Doesn't matter. Those names are ignored anyway. Use them. Length is length is good. So I'm going to use it like this. So it actually explains how things are. You don't have to, like usually when you are doing the, this, the, 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 the coding of the function, you want short variables because you want to quickly write it, right? You don't want to write, gar, gar, gar. but for a, for a prototype, be descriptive. Write COBOL-like names. If you don't know what COBOL language is, you, you're very fine because it's older than me. So like those, like it used to be like that, like the variable names and stuff used to be, well, anyways. But yeah, so now I have the, uh, the variables over here. Now I'm going to go to, to bar.cpp. And what do I do? How, what is an empty uh, 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 code page? This is what it is. So in here, it's going to be bar.cpp. Immediately, I'm going to say include uh, bar.h. Right? And again, namespace SDDS. Now I'm going to start thinking. That's an empty CPP file. You're writing in a namespace. Now I'm going to think what I'm supposed to do. What I'm supposed to do is to just copy those things that I have written, so make it a module. Actually cut. I don't want them over there. I'm going to put them right over here. So those are the bars. Save. Now in here I can say, instead of doing all that, I can say include bar.h. I do not need to have any I.O. stream in here because uh, the, why is it giving me an error? Oh, <laughs> why, is it, why is it giving me an error? Let's debug. Not you. You know what's giving me an error? Why is it giving me an error? Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Seeing that header file with the prototypes that I have, why is that main giving me an error? Why? Huh? Everybody, take a quick look and see why. Why that bar is giving me an error? I included bar dot a. Huh? What? You can include it 50. Like you think IO stream is not going to work because it's included somewhere else? No. Thank you. You just got 1% for your midterm. Remind me on that. Okay? So I'll do this. Every now and then I give marks. So remember of those things and remind me so I can add it to your bonus marks. Midterm 1% you got. Okay? So that's that one. I am in, remember, we develop a namespace in our modules. We use our namespaces in, in main module, okay? Therefore, in here, I have to say using namespace, namespace, SDDS, either this, or I have to qualify every single thing by saying SDDS and then SD. I keep going like that. I don't want to do it. So I'm going to just have that one, OK? And now if we run it three years later, it's going to give me an error. What is the error? On the, oh, didn't I include uh, IO stream in the, in the here? No, I didn't. So I'll do it. Always uh, system includes come at the top. Never put them at the, after your uh, custom ones, OK? IO stream. And then in here, we're going to have 
Actually, let me put this thing inside the header file so it's easier. So I'm just going to put this one inside the header file in here. I'm going to say include it. And in here, I'm going to say using namespace std. Pardon me? Nah, it's OK. So if I compile and run it, it works perfectly. Do you think it's OK? Everything's good? Yes. 1% midterm. You got it. OK. I mentioned never, ever include a header file where you are not using it. Never, ever use the keyword using in a header file, ever. Don't just put up with whatever garbage I put over there. Critic me. Make sure that you are actually correcting me. I cannot put a, a head. Do you see IO stream being used in here? Why the heck I'm including it? And using namespace, that's a big no-no. Never do that, OK? Always, always, always. And by the way, you cannot get two bonus marks back to back. So those people who keep answering questions, you have to give chance to other people, OK? So the person who got a bonus mark, you have to wait for a week for the next one, OK? So that's that one. So now in here, I'm going to put it over there. And using namespace comes before the code is being done. Now it's a perfect, perfect modularization, modularization of, if, if that's the word, of bar. Are we good? Are we OK? One. Are we OK? Two. So, OK, so next thing. What, as you see, the logic over there between these three are exactly the same. I'm just removing one bar at the time, but I'm going through it, right? We could actually use, let me just, I, I already have the overloaded version one version over here, so you see what the overloads are. So I'm going to fix this one and make it even better. Uh, C++, how, the, how is a function called? Did I talk about how a function is called in C language? How, does a, how, is, how a function gets called in C language? Anybody knows? You don't know? OK. <clears throat> A function is called in C language as follows. So when you are actually in main calling a function like that, it's as if you are do, doing something like this in the function. So when it's called, the function that you have in here, this will happen to it. So let me actually bring it underneath. So that function call will be fill equal to dash. So this is what happens behind the scene when a function is called. And this is set to 50. This is what it does. That's how a function is called. So when you pass an argument, you're essentially telling to the compiler, when creating the argument variables, initialize them to these values. That's how the values are passed to a function. When you pass a value, and everything is passed by value, there is no pass by address that we did in IPC 144. When you say, we are passing this by address, that's wrong. You are actually passing the address by value, <laughs> but it happens to be there's a pointer sitting at the other side receiving that value, which is an address, OK? So don't give pointers extra credit. Pointers are exactly regular variables. They are just weird integers. That's all. That's what they are. And their definition is a little weird. You have to put an asterisk after what we'll come to it soon. I'm, I'll explain it. But, but uh, everything's passed by value, and that's how it is. So essentially, you're saying character fill, that's how it's called, right? C goes even further. C says, first put the chair away so you don't hit it. And then it says, it says, if your logic is to just remove variables and give it default values, I can do that for you. If you are saying, you, if, I, if, you don't, if you want length to be 70, if it's not provided, I'll do it for you. Go in the prototype and write the value you desire. And you don't need to implement any function anymore for it. So what happens over here, I'm saying, if I said, if I said bar plus, 
it tries to find a match. There is no match. It looks at it and it says, oh, there we go. There is a default value over there. If I put that plus for character to fill the bar with, I can use the default value 70 to initialize length, I'm done. So you don't have to, re if the logic is the same when you are overloading a function and you are just removing the, val uh, the, variable, the arguments for initial default values, you can actually do that. Like for example, if I say there is no bar, I want, there is no argument, I want it to be, what did I do? I want it to be the assignment operator, right? I can just remove that one too. Oh, not that one, remove, come over here, remove this one, and say put a default value for this one. So, so what happens over here is this, it says, if both values, character and int, are provided, the heck with these default values you gave me, I don't care. I'm gonna use your values, the one that you passed. But from the last one, if you keep ignoring, if you, if you only provide the character, I'll get the character, this is gonna be by default value. If you don't provide anything, I'm gonna use both default values over here and run your function. And the outcome is identical to the other one with absolutely no difference. But for the third one, there is no way, that's different. I cannot do anything with that. No, I cannot say ignore the first one, the ignore, I cannot say this doesn't have anything, but you can't do that. It's only from the last one. The syntax of C language doesn't pro allow you to have default values for inner arguments. It has to start from the outer ar argument. So you can have, so, so you could have uh, a function with default arguments as such. You could have something like foo integer a, character b is set to, um, I don't know, whatever, uh, b, and uh, I don't know, double uh, D set to two, three, four. That is perfectly good. So if somebody tells you what are different signatures of this function, this function has three signatures. One is foo char double, the other one is foo char, and the last one is foo int. But the minimum number of things you can call that foo with is only an integer. Capisce? Are we okay with this? We're all good? All right, so, and that's called default <coughs> value for arguments in C++, and that's only C++, that is not C. <coughs> that only applies to C++. Are we okay, one? If you call the last one first, yeah. <laughs> first one is the, you can start from last one, as you see, the last one is double, the, the one to last is B, so last to first. You cannot have the first and don't put anything for the last. It should be from right to left. You can fill default values, because that's the syntax of the language. You cannot call the foo. C doesn't allow you to call foo like this. You can't do that. You cannot ignore, sorry. You cannot call foo like this. You cannot not put value halfway. It doesn't understand that. A function called in C needs value and comma and value and comma and value and comma. Right? It, it works that way. You cannot ignore from the beginning. Yes? So the Give me a second. I just pushed something and hell broke loose over here. Okay, go ahead. Give me line number. Line number. Uh, nine. nine. Let's say if we think there is no error, then on the left side the line number eight won't, uh, won't work. No, 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 that's a big boo boo. You cannot, again, it becomes two anushes. Identical twins, doesn't work. <laughs> All right? Uh, you're in trouble, I know your name now. <laughs> All right, are we good? Are we okay with this? All right. So we know how functions are called and we know how overload is done. So let's save this. So, yeah. So this one I'm going to say uh, D, how funks are called. 
def value and bar main. Woo! Dot CPP. All right? <coughs> because at the beginning I lost some time, we're not going to have a break today. My apologies, okay? I'm just going to go to the any, If anybody's desperately in need of break, then I'm going to give you guys a break. But if, can, can, you, can you keep, anybody wants to go for a break? Okay. All right. Okay, because my name is difficult to be, like for many people it's difficult to call Fardad, okay? I want you to call me Freddy from now on. Is that okay? Freddy, so I'll call me Freddy. Yeah, like Freddie Mercury, but it's like with, without the last, last cool name, like <laughs> with, <laughs> with crappy last name. Okay, so Freddie is okay? So everybody calls me Freddie, right? So now, if Freddie is sick today, will Fardad come to work? Is it possible? Like if Fardad teaches you chemistry, will Freddie teach you C++? No. So having somebody, giving somebody an alias doesn't mean we have two people, right? I have one person. So I can literally refer to the same person with two different names. So please don't call me Freddy. Call me Fardad. I think you can do it, but that was just to, to prove a point, okay? Having an alias, it doesn't mean that you have a new thing. It means that you can give an already existing thing a new name. Okay, so let's say, what did I use over here? Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah, good, this is good. So what, let's say I have, I'll, I want to use the same name and example of the other class. The reason is that the other class, half of the audio was gone, and I told them, uh, uh, please watch the video for the other class, and I don't want the examples to be too different. Already it's, it's very different, so I, I just want to make it, yeah. Anyway, so let's say I have over here uh, an integer value, and I'm going to set the value 20 for that. Okay? Are we okay with this? Anybody's okay with that? <laughs> now I'm going to say, now I'm going to say, I have an alias called age for val. So that ampersand that you see over there, that actually creates an alias. So I don't have two variables now. I only have one variable one integer that has two names. After doing so, age and val are indistinguishable. You cannot identify which one is what. What age is, is val. What val is, is age. No difference. Let's check it out. See what I'm going to do in here. I'm going to say, unsigned address of val, so I want to see where val is in memory, okay? And then I'm going to say, it's a good idea to actually include IO stream and using them names for the STD. So in here, and I'm going to say unsigned. The reason I'm saying unsigned is that, as I told you, pointers and addresses are just weird integers. You cannot... You cannot have a negative number for an address, right? You cannot say minus 3 Leung Street. You can't do that. It's all positive, right? You don't have a minus 3 for something. It's the same thing for an address. So in here, I'm going to say address of age. I want to see where in memory they are sitting. And I see right now people are leaving. So we're going to give you a break for 5, 10 minutes. Come back and we'll continue. This is the most important part of C++, and people are going to washroom and stuff. So. Uh, Please remind me to continue recording afterwards. Break, five, ten minutes, come back. All right. So to validate what I just said, that val and age are essentially the same variable, not two different ones, 
I am extracting the address of vow and address of age and show them so we can see where they are sitting in memory. And doing so, what I will see will be these two numbers. Look at that. Identical. They are in exact same place in memory. Okay? So these two are not two different variables. They are identical variables with two different names, which means if I, if I change the values and display them, you will see that it's going to be all the same. So, whoa, oh, I, I thought I copied it. Oh. Yeah, so when I show age and value, you'll see they're going to be both 20. And when I just set the age to 40, you're going to see they're both still 40 with absolutely no difference. See? So I set one, the other one is set. It doesn't make any difference. I, I read one, it's the exact value of the other one. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Why do you look like a question mark? Okay. It's just an integer with two different names. So if you set one, it's the, the va because the value is the same place in location, the other one is the same. So, so it, yeah, so we don't have, again, we don't have two different variables. Setting age is the same thing as setting val. No difference. Okay? I could have set the val and age would have changed. So in here I can say val is set to 100. It's set to 100. And it will be the same. Right? Are we good? Are we okay? One, two, okay. So, so that's E. Ref intro. This thing that I created creates this huge, huge opportunity that we can tap into. Makes our life much easier, especially when we are listening to our professor when he's teaching. Okay? So, it taps to a very important feature of C language and gives us lots of relief. Let me explain. If I wanted to, if I wanted to, for example, create a program that reads an integer and qualifies the integer to be between such and such value, this would have been my code. I have an integer pointer P, okay? I have an integer low and an integer high. Obviously, the signature of this function is read integer pointer integer integer, correct? And I will set a result over here to return true or false if this read was successful or not. I read something into target of P, and then if target of B is greater than or, or equal than low, or target of P is less than or equal than high, then result will become one. Therefore, I can actually use this, use this thing to write a program like this. So, <clears throat> where's my mouse? There we go. So I can say, <clears throat> age, enter your age, read address of age. I pass the address of age. I check it between 10 and 90, uh, 99. Hello, age years old, cool, and otherwise it's going to be an invalid age. We know all that, uh, but I have to actually talk about something now because that's uh, uh, kind of a uh, thing that causes confusion in, in, uh, uh, in C language, and I have to clear it up. I always talk about this with my IPC students, and since uh, uh, we haven't had that chance, I have to clear this up. Okay? Can I, you think, move this up? How do I? 
um, screen up. I think this is good enough, okay? So, all right. And let's, now we can actually make the screen blank. Okay, so let's have this over here because I want, I want you to actually see and understand this. So, I need a marker. Understanding the syntax of pointers. <clears throat> the most important thing you need to do is to understand how to call things properly. How to call things properly. Why? If you do not, if you, if you don't call something with its proper name, you will never, un, you will never exactly understand what it is. <clears throat> the problem is that I've heard too many times people saying integer star p integer asterisk p. That's not right. That's not an integer asterisk p. Okay? That's an integer pointer p. Okay? And this is one type, like a double. You say double d, or you say integer pointer p. p is a variable, d is a variable. p holds a double number, so uh, d holds a double number, p holds an integer address. Done. Don't give pointers extra credit. They're just variables. That they happen to hold a weird number. That's it. That's all it is. There is no magic behind it. Now, how to use that asterisk and understand what to call it? I can't use that to wipe that off, can I? Uh, okay. I guess so. All right. So asterisks and what they mean. If you look at an asterisk and you feel happy, that's multiplication. Oh, that's a plus. <laughs> a multiplied by C. A is equal to B multiplied by C. Are we okay with this? If you look at the thing and you go, huh? That means target of. That means target of. A is set to B multiplied by target of C, which means C must be a pointer. So when asterisk doesn't make sense, it means target of. Don't say star C. Say target of C. So you know C is targeting something, pointing to something. If you don't mention it right, it never sits in your brain. Got it? Next one. When asterisk comes after a type, building asterisk p. The asterisk belongs to the type, no matter what type. Building, car, integer, double, character, anything. Any type. Okay, compound type or regular type, we don't care. Together, it's one type and it's a pointer of that type. So building pointer P, character pointer Q. Never say character star Q ever, or character asterisk Q. What is Q? Q is a variable. What does it hold? An integer that is happened to be an address of a character. This one, P, is a variable that holds address of a building. Not like 32, I don't know, Bathurst Street, not something like that. I mean, like address in memory, right? An integer number. Or if you have student pointer S, 
That means S is an address, is a pointer holding the address of a student. Are we okay with this thing? So we understand what asterisks are, hopefully. Are we good? Okay, so never use the asterisk with its name. It's other multiplication or target of or pointer. That's it. Are we good with this? All right. Next. If you think asterisk is weird, look at the ampersand. Ampersand, the good thing is that half of it you don't need to know. It's next semester. I ruined it. <laughs> okay, the other half is like, but, but the, what we need to know for this semester, I'm going to tell you. So, if you feel double happy, it means and. Okay? A is equal to B and C, and B and C are conditions. Considered to be conditioned. And they, they are either true or false with, uh, from, from the point of view of C language. So C language tries to examine them. It doesn't matter what their type is. Whatever the type is, double, int, boolean, whatever it is, it tries to find out if it's zero or it's not. And the result of the whole thing is either true or false, or false. So these two values, did we talk about Boolean in, in this class, or not yet? Not yet? We'll talk about it soon. So there is a, t because truth and falsehood was a little bit confusing in C language. In C language, what is true? Anything not zero. So anything that is not zero is true. 1.1, 3, A, character A, 32, 1, they are all true. And what is not true? Zero. That's it. Easy. Right? Because of that, they actually created a variable. They created a type called bool. Not bool that you, I mean like bool. Okay? Boolean. Okay? So you have Boolean bool and you put over here a variable name. So they made it in a way so no matter what value you put in it, it becomes one, it becomes true. So if I set that to 32 and I print it, it is two, it is one. Did I say two? Brain goes bananas. <laughs> All right, so anything you put in that bool thingy, if you print it out, it's gonna print one. So bool is essentially an integer that can have only two values. Zero and one. If you put zero in it, it's zero. If you put anything else, it's one. Okay? Therefore, they created these two values too. So you actually, T-R-U-E in C++ is one. It means true. And false in C++ means false. It means zero. Okay? You can actually, okay. Are we good with this? All right. So having said that, that's what it is. That's what it is. If you see there is one and over here, if you see something like this one and over there, what you got to do? Wait for three, four, five. OK? <laughs> All right? Wait for three, four, five, too rich for our blood. OK? If you see it comes before a variable, so if you have this is address of. So A is set to address of B. We know that B can be anything. And A is a pointer of that type. Okay? Are we good? So that's address of. Never call that ampersand. That's address of, all right? And finally, if the ampersand comes right after a type, I don't know why I'm saying building today, it just, <laughs> okay? That means a syntax error, you can never have that because B becomes a reference of building which means it needs another building to point at, to, to be assigned to. I cannot say, Freddy is an alias. Immediately you're going to say, 
whose alias? Right? You cannot have written, you cannot write something like this. That does not make sense. That's a syntax error. To fix that, you have to have another building somewhere. You have to have another building somewhere and point to it. So therefore, if you have something like this, you have to have a building, say, um, ABC, and then you can now write building reference B is set to ABC. It means I have one building with two names, B and ABC. And exact same thing for integers, characters, whatever you have. You can even have a reference of a pointer if you want to, because pointer is a type, right? I can have integer pointer reference. So if I want to do that, it could be something like this. I can write, for example, I have an integer pointer P. Now I can have integer pointer reference RP set to P. It means I only have one pointer called P and RP. There are two names for it. Right? So that's the naming stuff, syntax, and I want you to understand this. Do not call an ampersand ampersand anymore. It's either address of or something reference or and. Right? So these are the three things. When you see an ampersand, if this is it, you don't say anything, you wait for three, four, five. If it's not like that, you have only uh, these possibilities. It's either address of, or if, if it's two of them, it's logical and, or at the end, it could be reference of something. Integer reference, character reference, building reference, whatever reference. Are we good? All right. So knowing that, let's actually continue our thing. How do I stop this? I have to just stop it, I guess. There we go. All right. I'm sorry that I'm using this beautiful piece of cloth over here, but All right. Having said that, let's make that read better now. Let's actually use that thing that I told you references do that is beautiful, helps us do things easier. Let's actually use that. What can I do over here? Instead of passing an address, I can simply say int read integer reference r int low int high, right? Yes. Oh, what if we actually show the screen? Thank you. Use the force. There we go. Okay, so, so I'm saying read integer reference r, okay? Now, when the function is called, so if I actually call the function like this, I do not need to pass any type of thing behind it because I know for a fact you should initialize a reference with a value. So if I just do this and write age, that's enough because when it's called, when it's called, read is going to be called, read is going to be called like this. So I'm going to put it over here. So the function call for read is going to act as follows. It's going to be, what did I do? The function call for read will act as follow. As follows. So it's going to be set to h. It's going to be low set to 10. Remember I told you that's what a function call is? And this is going to be 99, correct? That's how the function is going to get called, correct? What does that mean? It means because the reference R will be created when the read is being called, R becomes a new name for age. Therefore, I don't need to think about target of and pointer and address of, nothing. 
I just do it like that. And inside my read, all I need to do is to write C in R. I don't need to create a variable result or anything. I, that actually has nothing to do with this, but I don't need to have, say target of P as I did with the other one. And because now I moved a little further, if I look at the condition, this condition either returns true or false, correct? So first of all, I'm going to make this read Boolean, not like that, because I wanted to return a true or false, correct? And secondly, in here I'm going to say return R being greater than or equal to low and R being less than or equal to high. I don't need to write an if statement. Why? If statement is a condition, right? That's not actually C++. I could have done that with the top one too. It doesn't make any difference. But why do I write a condition? You are saying, if this is true, return true. If this is false, re why? Just return the condition. It's going to return the proper thing. And look at the, like, the, compare the, the two codes. And they are doing the identical things. Isn't that easier to do it like the other one? It is, right? And it works the exact same way. So if I run this beautiful program of mine, I'm pressing F10 to start debugging. All right. And let me just stick it to the left over here and have the value over here and walk through it, see how it's going to look like. Enter your age. So it goes, as you see, what, what we have over here is the address of age that is this number. Of course, it's not going to show, it's going to show it as a hexadecimal value. It's not an unsigned. That's why it looks weird, okay? So then the address of age is passed to P. So P points to age now. Now it says, get an integer from console and put it in the target of P. Therefore, that's going to receive an integer over there, and I'm going to say 30, and I'm going to hit enter, and it's going to say, is target of P, that is 30, greater than low and less than high? The answer is true. Therefore, the result will be 1 and returns 1, and therefore it's going to say, hello, 30-year-old person. and pass through it, okay? As easy as that. And we're going to have the same thing over here, is not to have a uh, bad thing. Okay, so now I'm going to stop it, stop the execution, rerun it, stop. And now I'm going to put a stop sign right to the next one because I changed the code. Now I'm going to say, uh, where is the debug thingy? I uh, can simply say run to cursor. So I'm going to go debug, run to cursor. Oh, no, no, uh, no, start debugging. Sorry, I'm going to say start debugging. It's going to execute and stop right at that stop sign that I put. Of course, it needs the first one, so that's 30. And it's going to say hello, 30-year-old person. And now in here, it's going to actually, nothing's going to get passed over there because the age over here is this age and as soon as it goes to as soon as it goes to read in here r becomes the new name for age and it's 30 and when you are reading r you are actually reading age because it is the new name for age no difference right it's a reference and then uh, reads it so now i forgot to actually tell ask how old are you now i'm going to say over here 50 and it's going to read the 50 compare uh, uh, do the comparison, return it, and it's going to say hello 50-year-old thingy and so on and so forth. Are we good? So references are very useful. Essentially, in most times, you don't need to use pointers anymore. Of course, sometimes you need to for, you've got to find out when, but references will just do. Easy. Easy to use. Make your life much, much easier. So in here, I'm going to fix this. Uh, and say enter your age again, and save it. And in here I'm going to say ref
Now, let's make it a little, little more weird now, okay? So, I said whenever you write integer reference, whatever is in front of it will be new name for something, right? That's what we said, correct? So, what if I write a function like this, int reference foo int reference r, and in here I just return r. It doesn't make sense now why we need to do this. I just want you to understand and debug it, see what happens when I do that. Later, remember this moment and remember uh, when I'm going to overload index operator, okay? At that time, this is going to be an aha moment. So whenever you hear index operator overload, remember the crazy reference I'm going to talk about today, okay? So, in here, if I have integer, say, a, and I'm going to put over here 30, okay? And I say foo a plus equal 10. The first thing is going to be, what the heck? How you are putting a function at left and adding 10 to it? What does that even mean? Functions are not supposed to be added. That's a mistake, okay? It's not. Because I just mentioned foo becomes a new name for this r, correct? The whole function becomes a new name for r when it's returning it, correct? Now, r is a new name for a, correct? Because I'm passing foo over here, so essentially when it's called, this is the function call. So the function is called like foo integer reference r set to a, correct? So r becomes a new name for a, foo becomes a new name for r, so call me Freddy, and I'll go to the other things, hello, I'm Freddy, please call me Fred. So Fred, Freddy, and Fardad are the same people, right? It's the same thing over here. A is passed to R, R becomes a new name for A. Foo, the whole function, when returning R, becomes a new name for R. So if I do that, you're essentially saying add, uh, add uh, 10 to A. It's crazy. There is no reason I want to do such a thing. But it's just show, showing you what is the outcome of what I have written over here. So now if I go over here, I can do all these good stuff over here now. I can actually print it so you can see what's the value. So if I print A over here, obviously it's going to be 40. If I see out foo A, same thing, it's going to be 40. It's, foo is a new name for, for A, it's going to print the value of A. If I say plus plus foo, it actually adds to the value of A because foo is a new name for A. And so, again, so, yeah, I don't need to walk through it, just running it will do, because there's nothing to show. Enter your age, oh shoot. <laughs> Copy, uh, I don't need diagnostic tools. I need solution expert, I want this one. So I'm gonna paste this over here and cut this over here, put it back in here, <laughs> save everything, and rerun. Yeah, I know. It says that the executable is already running. What are you doing? All right, so now if you look at this, the outcome is going to be 40 for the first one, because I just added 10 to it, then it prints the 40, then it adds one to A, makes it 41, and A becomes 41, okay? Are we okay with this? All right, so I can call this crazy reference, or oh, remember me when index operator comes, right? So let's actually do that. I'm gonna say EFG crazy reference, Note when, nah, forget it, crazy reference is fine. Okay, so that's crazier, just, just to understand how it works. When the class ends, when does the class end? 12? 
30. Yeah, because I, I get the vibe, vibe like people want to go out. No, nope, stay. We have to finish this. All right. And... Yeah, this is the, the example that I wrote over here to explain what reference of a reference is in the other class because somebody said, what the heck? And I said, this is the reason. If I, have, if I have A and B is reference of A and C is reference of B, then A, B, C are all the same. Okay, whatever I do to A, it happens to B and C. Are we good? Just, just remember that, okay? Oh, I have two apps in here. So that's G, actually. That's G. And this will be H uh, ref of a ref dot CPP. Okay? All right. Okay, I hear lots of chit chats. I know you're bored, but don't talk. Okay, so next time I'm gonna bring uh, uh, one of those water pistols. <laughs> Anybody talk, so I'm gonna go. <laughs> okay, all right. Yes. Don't listen to her. Okay. Forget it. three, four, five. We'll talk about that later, or maybe later. Okay. <laughs> okay, so when you create an array, ladies and gentlemen, in C language, what you actually create is series of elements of that type of an array somewhere in memory and a pointer pointing to it. So essentially, in here, I have five integers and one integer pointer whose name is A. Got it? Because of the, this fact, in here, I can actually do something like this. I can actually say, of course, C out A0. So what, what I do like that, I, it actually means from address stored in A, go zero integers further. Which one it's going to be? The first one, right? It's the exact same thing if I say C out target of A, right? Target of A is the fir first thing in the array. So if I run this, the outcome will be the same, all right? And the exact same thing if I, if I for example, say A3 uh, over here, I can say C out target of, go from A three integers further and print it. So every Array is essentially a, a pointer of that part, po type pointing to all the elements inside the, at the beginning of the elements in the array. Yes? So in the line 7, you said CLK, so it's going to point to the first one, which is 10. Yes. Uh, let's say the other line CLK, sorry, that was going to point to the second one. Okay. What you wish is not going to happen. Walk through it yourself. Did you change the value of A afterwards? Why it should go to the next one? Because you like it? Now, not that I'm trying to mock you on that. I just want to give you the mentality. Nothing ever happens in C++ or any programming language unless you do it. So if I do A again, it's going to be A. I'm not going to advance in it. Did you say advance? Did you go to next one? Did you add one to A? No. And actually, you can't because A is a constant thing. It is doomed to point to that thing. If A could change, you would lose the array. Right? It's like you are writing the address of someone on an envelope. If I gave it to someone, she changes it. Then the first person is gone. You can't find them anymore because the address is gone. Got it? Okay. But that's, that was an important question, people. Many things we feel logical to happen. We like, we like it to happen because it seems good. Because when I print something, and then I print something comes after the one that I printed before, I think if I print A and I print it again, it's going to be the next element. No. 
unless you do it. So always remember this. Nothing happens automatically unless you do it. Having said that, I have three minutes to talk about this. If you want to, I have a question. Is there a way to write a program? And the definition of the program is this. Ask the user number of integers she wants to enter and print it in reverse order. Can, is this program possible to write with our knowledge? How? How many integers? What's going to be the size of your array? Huh? You can? Can we leave it blank? Like we can no, we cannot leave it. Again, you just wished it. What if I just leave it blank and C finds it by itself? It won't. If you say dynamic thingy, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> what do you want to say? Don't listen to her. We can't. With, with, that's three, four, five. Okay? So no, we can't because in like if I say what well, we say, okay, no problem. I'm gonna create an array of one million characters, one million integers, and just use the one. I would say, what if what if the person says one million and one? Then you're doomed, right? There is no way to do such a thing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> is what we have when. We write a program. Let me see what this. It's always reverse. Is it reverse? No, it's actually perfect. No, it's reverse. OK? So this is what you do. When you create an array, the array goes inside your executable. Correct? When you create an array, the array goes inside your executable. So if you create an array of a million integers, your executable is going to be larger on the hard disk, one million multiplied by four, because that's the size of one million integers, right? It's gonna be bigger. So we can't do that. And also, it's not possible for that to change because it is encoded in our executable and it saved that compile time. What we can do, however, is to just create one pointer and ask the, com ask the compiler to write the code for us so when we are running the program, we can ask operating system while it's calling, running, to give us the integers. So your program only has one pointer, not an array. Then you ask the user, how many integers do you want? User says 900. Then you say integer pointer A is equal to new int 900. And you've got to have 900 <coughs> elements allocated in the shared memory of your computer, not in your executable, and heap in the RAM of your computer. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is called dynamic memory allocation that we are going to talk about the next day you are coming in. Okay? We actually went through a lot in this thing. We did a few things in the other class, so you can watch the end of the other class just an introduction because I'm going to start from the beginning anyways. So you can list, look at the end of the recording of the other class, and you will see that I continue after this. Okay, so when you come, again, you have a re something is being taught twice, it's, it's going to be better. Yes? No question? Okay, <clears throat> are we good down to this point? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? We're good. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have yourself a wonderful, 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 beautiful day.